was doing the Chris Gethard show on stage at the UCB monthly. It was going really well there. It was like had a lot of buzz in the New York comedy scene. And then while that was running, I booked the lead role in a sitcom on Comedy Central, and that was like a big break. And there was all this press, and I, it was it was good. It was a great opportunity, but it bombed pretty hard. Um, it came and went. And most of the reviews were like pretty rough, and a lot of them were really rough on me, which is fine, but I kind of was left with this bitter taste in my mouth of like, like, I got the role out of nowhere, and all the press was like, who's this guy that Will Ferrell and Adam McKay have cast in this thing? And then it bombed, and all the press was like, this guy, it's his fault, was how I took a lot of it. You know what, I kind of have this show, and it's mine and I get to do what I want with it, so maybe I should maybe I should take it and turn it into this thing that I have total control over. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> Started doing a public access show mostly as an effort to um, do something that I, I have control over. that's like an outdated medium and maybe a little embarrassing in some way but I think I just really at coming off of a situation where I like flamed out in this big public thing that was very machine like with all these people pulling strings and making decisions and just kind of having to watch that happen I wanted to do something that was mine and public access was the only way in which I could do that we just show every Wednesday night 11 p.m. to midnight it's live on public access, we stream it live online, and then we put all the episodes up on the internet afterwards for downloading. Right now we're heading to the public access studio. Usually the public access studio is up near Columbus Circle. Now it's up in East Harlem, which is a little harder to get to, so I leave very early. Harder, much harder to book guests to come hang out in East Harlem, that's for sure. <laughs> like right now, pilot season's coming up, and I kinda, I don't wanna go. Because I kind of want to make this work, but I've been doing this for almost two years and it's not working. So it's like hard. My agents called me up and they were like, you should really go this year. I don't know. It just seems better to do this than like try to go like book a recurring role on like don't just be in apartment 23 or some show, you know? That just got canceled. Oh, that got canceled? <laughs> Look at that. My show lasted longer than that. My public access show lasted longer than the... So just the beat. I, I've done episodes of The Office. I filmed a part of Iron Man 3 this year. Like, I'm pretty confident I could go have a career if I wanted to go be a character actor. Like, I've had enough nibbles that I think if I went to LA I could do it, but it's a lot to walk away from. It's like, the show is tiny and almost no one cares about it, but the people who do care about it really care about it. So it makes it, I'm really hesitant to just walk away from that. This, this is all stuff from this shop. live on public access here in Manhattan. I want to say hi to everybody watching on the internet, especially the chat rats at thechrisgethardshow.com. Yes. 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 So here's what's going to happen. You're going to call us up, ask us for real advice from your life. If we have good, sound advice, those of us on the panel will hold up the white piece of paper. We'll be the angels. If you hear the person's problem and you're like, I know the vindictive, underhanded, <laughs> slime ball solution, what I would do if I was out to just give in to the dark fantasies, here's that, I'll be the devil. And then we will leave it up to you, the callers, to choose which you want to hear, the good advice or the admittedly very bad advice. It's all up to your choosing. One of the benefits 
of doing this thing in the way we do it, where it's this internet, public access, hybrid thing. It's like no one cares what we do with it, so we can be real honest and open. And I, I talk a lot about like stuff that's happened with me on a personal level, and I also am a big believer in like I I don't like. I've had some stretches of life that were not the best mentally, mental health wise, and not many people talk about that stuff. And I'm, I'm down to talk about it. A lot of kids have reached out and in very serious ways have said that the show is something that connects with them on like a level where I'm one of the people in their lives who talk about that. I get emails a lot and I get messages a lot from kids who are like, after reading your book and watching your show for a year, I finally decided it's time to take control of my panic attacks and seek real help never felt better thank you my issue now is I'm a private person and I tend not to let other people know the problems I'm having this isn't making it difficult to let my family and friends know that I'm having panic attacks and that I'm getting help do you have any advice on how to start that discussion that's so sad that kills me you know I'm gonna go to LA to like play like the like neurotic neighbor and that's fine but that's not the same as like being able to like connect with these kids where it seems like they need it so this is my tumblr inbox and not not all of these are people asking me for help and like mental health stuff but i would say over i would say about two-thirds of them are people reaching out to let me know that the show has helped them make feel make them feel better when they're having tough stuff in their lives. So like, I feel pretty uncomfortable writing this. I don't normally share my emotions. As a socially awkward and unattractive person, I have pretty low self-esteem. Mix this with my depression and some recent events that suggest I may have made a poor job choice. I had every intention to kill myself last night and had been planning it for quite some time. Till last night, I felt like I'd always be alone in dealing with certain issues. In the past, I tried opening up to several people I was close with, only to find I scared them away. I don't think there could have been a better topic than last night's to show me that there are people in the world capable of understanding and acceptance. I want to thank everybody at the Chris Gathered Show for creating an environment where people can discuss serious issues and find some humor in them. As far as my own problems go, I have no clue where to start with them, but at the very least, I've decided to give myself more time. So... That's like crazy. That's pretty crazy. This girl found our show and decided not to kill herself. Yeah, I want to keep doing this show even if I don't make money, you know? Tim, line two, are you there? Yeah. All right, what advice do you need in your life? I uh, recently started to go see a uh, person about my uh, anxiety issues. Uh, yeah, I've been going through. Um, uh, a lot of uh, panic attacks and that kind of stuff recently, and so, you know, that's just a lot of good advice you've been giving to a lot of people and would stop someone to talk to. Um, except now I don't know the next step. Um, I haven't really talked about this with my parents or friends, and I don't really know how to go about telling them, like, hey, I have all of these issues, and I'm talking to someone about them. Okay. I'm holding up a white piece of paper. A lot of other people seem to not be optimistic. <laughs> I feel like you're the best one to answer this. Shannon says I'm the best one. It looks like, who, I don't know. It looks yeah, like it's me or who's going to be the next Tim, it looks like you're stuck with me. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine, Chris. Okay, so Tim, first of all, congratulations on making the effort to, to fix yourself up. I think that's a great thing. Second of all, if anybody ever has an issue with you getting a medical uh, issue checked out, helping with a medical issue, then I would say they're a closed-minded person, either in reality or they, they were raised in a, in a different time. I bet you'll find more often than not that people, in my experience, people cared a lot less than I thought they were going to. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the problem is that... In a good way, yeah, in a good way. People cared about me as much as I hope they did, but nobody was like, man, you're a weak human being the way that... It would be the same thing of like, man, that's really fucking weak. I can take your insulin for your diabetes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Nobody says that shit, so they shouldn't yell at you either. You know what I mean? Nobody's gonna judge you. You're doing the right thing. You should be proud of yourself. That was a good show. And that's it. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm kind of at in my life. Like super psyched about what I do with this thing and super proud of it and really driven to make it my thing as much as possible. It'll sound cheesy, but I'm like, this feels more like... I've done a lot of types of comedy in the 12 years I've been doing comedy in New York and this feels most like a calling out of anything I've done. But also the least likely thing to succeed. So that's a pretty bad juxtaposition. Generally, either I, I either start talking to a girl, or if sometimes you're just perform, they'll be like, um, you know, those guys that are just like arms crossed, like super macho. Uh, for me, I cannot resist. I cannot not talk to that guy. Did you guys ever have like a like a great idea for a movie, and then you tell somebody, and they're like, "Well, that's already a movie. It's called Big Mama's House too." <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, sir? In the shirt, shirt? Did you? Okay. All right, because everyone else laughed. <laughs>